If someone had told me this about investing sooner, I would be much closer to financial independence. I would have spent more time with my kids and I probably would have made it to the gym more often. You may be thinking that I'm gonna say that real estate helped me build my wealth faster or that index fund or stock market investing made it super easy. But what I wish I knew is that there's a strategy that combines these two elements and it's passively investing in real estate. In this video, I'm gonna look at those three types of investing, the three types of investing that I've done over the last eight years. And I'm gonna share my real returns with you. This is the path that I've taken as a busy full-time working mom who wants to improve her health as she gets older and to have more time flexibility as soon as I possibly can. This is what I found that might help me reach a $5 million net worth up to 10 years faster. All right, let's jump in. First, most people start with stock market investing, maybe more specifically index fund investing. Now, index fund investing has many benefits, including long-term, historically really stable returns, lower risk. You are diversified across a broad group of companies based on the entire stock market index. The better part of index funds versus mutual fund investing is that there's lower fees, it's low cost. The expense ratios is what you can look up here. They're much lower than actively managed mutual funds. This can make a big impact for your wealth over long periods of time. Another big benefit to index fund investing and why I keep doing it too is that it's super easy. You basically set it and forget it. There's some asset allocation rebalancing that you can do, but you can also just put your money in a target date fund and basically forget about it until you want to retire. The downside of index fund investing is that the returns aren't out of this world. Historically, there's been about a 7% rate of return in the market that's accounting for inflation over the course of decades and decades of growth. Now, that can build your wealth, absolutely, don't get me wrong, but it left me a little uninspired, especially not getting started until I was like in my 30s. Then I found real estate investing. And more specifically, I had some people in my life show me that real estate investing can be done by anyone. People like me, people who have never renovated or fixed and flipped a house before. And real estate investors typically get some pretty good returns on their investment. This is thanks to appreciation of home values over time. This is thanks to the using leverage to be able to borrow money that you're ultimately going to be able to grow your wealth with and have tenants pay down that debt. And then also in my case, some specific strategies like house hacking, where I chose to live in my rental property for the first year so that I could get a really low down payment, which was 3.5% at the time. So it allowed me to put even less money down over time. The biggest downside to real estate investing and what I found honestly just like killed, took the wind out of my sails entirely, was how much time it actually took. My husband and I self-manage our property. We flipped it into a duplex after we, we moved into it, put a different unit in it. Now we have two tenants in there. And even just last weekend, he spent the whole weekend doing yard work over there. This is not how we want to be spending our time. And I found that if I wanted to scale this portfolio and grow it so that it built bigger wealth over time, the kind that you can retire with, I was going to sacrifice a lot of nights and weekends. This was at a time in our life where my daughter, who was about two years old, was in daycare. And some days I, I just kept her in for an hour extra, another hour extra so that I could get a little bit of work done after my nine to five. And I look back on those years and I'm heartbroken with how much time I kind of missed. Five days of nine hours of daycare is a lot of things that you're missing with your kids. This leads me to the third type of investing and the one that's less familiar to most people. This is passive real estate investing as a group in what's called a syndication. Most people don't know about this because it's typically, historically, only been sort of accessible to institutionalized or ultra high net worth investors. But there's different groups out there like Good Egg Investments that really try to bring in everyday people like you and I to give us access to this type of real estate. And I'm talking about commercial real estate. So apartment buildings or hotels or self-storage units, bigger properties where you do need to bring multiple millions of dollars to the table to purchase it. So this was the best of both worlds. I'm getting the potentially higher returns of real estate investing while being able to diversify across different markets, different properties with $10,000 here, $20,000 here, and I'm not spending any of my precious time doing the management. This is the beauty. You're working with a team who does 
all of the work. Literally, you are totally passive. After you wire your money, you get to set it and forget it, just like that index fund investing. Now there's downsides to this, right? I have less control. I'm relying on the expertise of a team, but I'm vetting that team really stringently before I get started. There's also different market risks with real estate investments. But traditionally, it's been a pretty good hedge against inflation and generally increases value over time. It's a great hard asset to grow your wealth in. Then there's this initial hurdle of understanding the process. But there's groups out there that have broken it down in a really easy format. In fact, you can download our free seven-day email course, no cost. We don't sell courses. This is just our way to help tell more people about this type of investing strategy in a really friendly and open way. You can find that in the description below to get on that seven day email course. You can literally do this while you're at work. Just read that email once a day and you are going to know so much more and be actually have the confidence to kind of take the next step towards building your wealth this way. Let's look at some of the real returns from my portfolio here. So I went back into my brokerage accounts and I have an IRA, a money market account and a Roth IRA. And it looks like my investments were Not for very long. We only made them back in 2016, late in 2016 is when we got started. So since late 2016, I've had an average annualized return of 7 to 7.7%. That's pretty right on the mark of what we've seen historically, although that's not accounting for inflation, so it's actually kind of low. I did see that in my money market account, it was 11%, which is much more on the nose. Unfortunately, I don't have as much money in my money market account as I do in those Roths. And really, these are all just spread across different types of index funds. So they're matching the market, large cap, mid cap, that's basically that. Okay, so my rental property, like I said, I used less money down. I only had to put $18,000 down. It was a 3.5 five percent down rate that I got because I was going to live in that property. It was a primary residence property, but my plan was, and I analyzed the property so that I knew that if we lived in it for one year, I could then move out and turn it into a rental property. And I ran the numbers and they didn't work out, as is the case in many markets, especially where you might live, right? Your local market. But I found that if I could carve off the basement into its own separate apartment, then I could put two tenants in there and it would be a good cash flowing. So we decided to put uh, about $14,000 in for renovations. So that first year we were in $18,000 down payment and about $13,500 for those renovations. Now we put tenants in there after we left, just normal re- renovations after that. We actually did the roof in that initial one. My husband put on the roof. My husband put in the kitchen downstairs. Lots of sweat equity went into those numbers too. That's not captured in the in the dollar sign amounts. Looking at that rental, we've had a negative 5% annualized return. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we've lost money on this rental property, but that's not the full story here. And we did put in very little, which was great. It's been really steady. I've been able to steadily just increase the rents with market rate. If I were to sell that house right now and doing just like a straight line progression of what it could potentially earn on Zillow right now, who knows if that's accurate, it would have appreciated approximately 11% every year since we purchased it. That is like, that's a huge amount of appreciation for real estate. That would mean that if I sold it today, I could potentially have been making a 95% return on my investment. That's pretty good. So what this tells me about real estate is that you may not get those higher returns early on while you're putting, while you're building the value, while you're putting in the value. We did those renovations, we're keeping the property up, and we're allowing time to increase the value. Let's take a look at my real estate syndication returns. I've got my money in four different syndications. I've got some self storage units over here, an apartment building over here, a couple apartment buildings in this fund, and a couple hotels in another. And that makes me sound like a super high roller, but let me remind you that these are smaller amounts too. $10,000, like I said, $20,000 here. And this is really wonderful because you don't have to be a millionaire to get started investing this way. There's options out there for non-accredited investors, those of us who don't have a million dollars yet in net worth, that allows us to invest even minimally $10,000 at a time. So my first two investments in real estate syndications, which I've owned the longest, are a self-storage unit facility, actually three of them, and apartments. Now I've owned these for two years, And it's been a rocky two years in the world of real estate, especially commercial real estate, because of the high interest rate environment. So this means that 
There could have been properties out there purchased with floating rate interest rate loans. And this means that that interest rate could have just gone up, 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 meaning the costs every month to pay down that debt also increasing every month. Now, luckily, my investments are continuing to pay me out, which means that they're still really healthy. This means they either purchased with fixed rate debt, similar to like your fixed rate 30 year mortgage you probably have on your home or are looking at if you wanna purchase a home one day, or they purchased interest rate caps, which means that that interest rate could only go up to a certain amount. This builds in risk mitigation. It decreases the risk that these buildings are gonna have less cash flow. So my cash flow for the last two years annualized for both of these, it's been about 3%. That's not super inspiring, but the projected amounts was 4.5%. So this isn't that far off during a market that has been actually pretty tumultuous. Just the fact that I'm getting distributions in these first few years is a sign to me that these are actually pretty healthy investments. And that was kind of what was projected. The increase in, inv in returns wasn't really projected until years three, four, and five in this to be able to annualize that return to a 17% rate. So again, real estate is a little bit more of a long-term play, just like index fund investing, but you're getting a higher return during those long-term years. So the next two assets that I have have only been owned for one quarter. So we're looking at a very small amount of data here, but these are my hotel investments and then another apartment fund. The hotel investments are actually returning exactly what they projected, about 9% if I annualize that over the year. This is great news. To be delivering that return right out of the gate is pretty phenomenal. Now, my other one is a little bit lower. It's around 5 or 6%, but that's because this is what the plan was all along in this asset. If I go back to my projected returns that were I evaluated when I decided which of these funds I wanted to put my money into, I could see that the returns in the first few years weren't that high. This is typical of real estate. So I'm not surprised. I'm actually really excited that we're going to meet projections that I'm going to get this 17 to 20 percent annualized return on these investments, which is a lot faster wealth growth than that index fund investing that I have sitting over here just for fun. Now, knowing my strategy with investing is not going to help you build your wealth faster and leverage these new investing strategies to be able to get your time back sooner. You have to take action. If you want to know, learn more about this kind of investing, check out this next video here where we lay it all out in really simple form to be able to describe what is passive real estate investing so that you can start taking action today to reach financial independence sooner.